Good evening, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 4.1, Algebra, Multiplication Patterns with Decimals. The essential question for tonight is how can patterns help you place the decimal point in a product? Let's get started on lesson 4.1 in our Go Math book. Let's begin, boys and girls, at question number two. Question number two says one times 30. We're gonna start off by answering that. We know the identity property means that our product would be 30. Now I'm going to place a decimal point right after that because I know it's 30 holes. It's in my ones and tens place. Now, if I were to multiply 30 by one tenth, one tenth of 30, I know that this is a decreasing power of 10, which means my product will have to be decreased. It must be less than 30 because one tenth of 30 is less than 30. This is the pattern we're going to do. I'm going to write 30 down right here, but instead of having my decimal point after the ones place, I'm gonna move the decimal point one place to the left, which places it right here. Now you can see I have three ones, or three holes, and that makes sense. One tenth of 30 would be three. Notice how this is a decreased answer of 30. It's less than 30 because I'm multiplying 30 by 1 tenth. In the same way, if I were to multiply 30 by 1 hundredth, I, were to, I would need to have to move my decimal point two places to the left. So let's go ahead and write the number 30, and now let's place our decimal point. It normally would be right here, but we're going to move it two places to the left, which means our decimal point will go right here. Now we would call this 30 hundredths, or we can call it 3 tenths. And we all know 3 tenths is written like this. Remember, 30 hundredths is equivalent to 3 tenths. Now on question number 2, we multiplied by decreased powers of 10, which were decimal numbers. However, on question number 3, as you see, these are powers of 10 that are greater than 1. Therefore, our product would be greater. So let's go ahead and begin. Now we learned back in chapter 1 that the 0 power of 10 really has the value of 1. So let's write a 1 right above that to remind ourselves. And we know the identity property. Any number times 1 always equals itself. Therefore, 1 times 23 hundredths will have the value of 23 hundredths. So go ahead and write 23 hundredths on that first line. Now let's look at the next question. It says the first power of 10 times 23 hundredths. Well, we know the first power of 10 just means one group of 10. So let's go ahead and write right above it a 10. That way we know that's its value. And 10 times 23 hundredths we're going to go ahead and write our 23 hundredths, but this time we'll be moving our decimal point from this point to the right. So let's go ahead and place our decimal point to the right. Okay? So whenever you multiply by an increased power of 10, you're going to move your decimal point to the right. So it was right here, 23 hundredths, but we're moving it to the right. Therefore, 10 times 23 hundredths is 2 and 3 tenths. Notice how this is a greater value than 23 hundredths. Now let's go to the next one, the second power of 10. And we know this really means 10 times 10. And we all know 10 times 10 has a value of 100. So let's go ahead and write 100 right above that to remind ourselves. 100 times 23 hundredths. Now let's go ahead and write 23 and remember, 23 hundredths normally would have your decimal point right here, but because I see that I have 2 as my exponent, and we know it's multiplying it by 100, I'm going to move it two places this time to the right of the decimal point. So let's go ahead and put it right here. And that really means 23 holes. So 100 times 23 hundredths equals 23. Notice again that this is an increased product because it's 100 times 23 hundredths. 
it's 100 groups of 2,300, so it equals 23 holes. Again, to remind yourselves, I have two zeros, so I'm moving my decimal point two places to the right. Also, I have two as my exponent, so I'm moving my decimal point two places to the right. So you can see our pattern, what's happening. It is becoming increased. So on this one, we all learned that the third power of 10 would be 10 times 10 times 10, also known as 1,000. So let's go ahead and write 1,000 right there. 1,000 times 23 hundredths. Let's go ahead and write our 23. Now originally, our decimal point would be right here, but let's move three places over to the right. One, two, I need to make one more space so we can add a zero right here, and now we may place our decimal point. And really, this has the value of 230 holes. So 1,000 times 23 hundredths equals 230, or the third power of 10 times 23 hundredths is 230. So remember, when you multiply by a power of 10 greater than 1, you're going to move your decimal point to the right. But remember on question two, when you're multiplying by a power of 10 less than one, you're moving your decimal point to the left. So let's go ahead and look at question four. This is similar to question two. Let's start out with what we know. We know the identity property is 390 times one, therefore we should write 390. And now let's look at the next question. It says 390 times one tenth. Now remember, this is a power of 10 that is less than one whole. Therefore, we need to take our decimal point that would normally fall right here, right behind my ones place, and we're going to move it to the left. Because remember, our product needs to decrease because we're multiplying it by a number less than one whole. So 390 times 1 tenth. Let's go ahead and write down 390 so we can place our decimal point. Now normally we would have it right here, but let's all take our pencils and move it one place to the left because we're multiplying it by one tenth. So we're moving it one place to the left and therefore we should put our decimal point right there. And this makes sense. 390 times one tenth or one tenth of 390 is just 39. Notice again that this is a number that is smaller than 390. So our answer makes sense. Let's look at the next one, 390 times 100. Go ahead and write 390 with me. And normally we would put our decimal point right here if it was the identity property times one, but we're going to move our decimal point two places to the left because this is a number that is decreased by power of 10. So we're gonna move it one, two places. Go ahead with me and put your decimal point right here. So 100, of 390 is 3 and 9 tenths, also known as 3 and 90 hundredths. Okay friends, so let's look at number 5. It's very similar to question number 3. We're multiplying by powers of 10 that are greater than one whole. So we know that our product will be increased because these are not decimal numbers. These are powers of 10 that are greater than 1. Therefore, let's go ahead and begin. Let's start out by looking at zero powers of 10. We know that that would just be the value of a one then. And we know with our identity property multiplication that one times 49 and 32 hundredths would be 49 and 32 hundredths. Please write that down with me on your first line. Now let's look at the question number two on this question. We see that we're multiplying by the first power of 10. And we know this just means one group of 10. Therefore, the value is 10. Write that right above it for me. And this is like saying 10 times 49 and 32 hundredths. Let's go ahead and write 49, 32 without our decimal point, And just gently put your pencil right where it normally would be. But now we're going to move our decimal point one place to the right. So we're going to move it right there. And go ahead and put your decimal point right between the 3 and the 2. So now this makes sense. 10 times 49 and 32 hundredths would be 493 and 2 tenths. Notice how this is a product that is increased because 49 times 10 would be about 490. And this is around 490. So let's take a look at the third one. The second power of 10 we know is like saying 10 times 10 
which we know has the value of 100. Remember, 2 as my exponent means I should have two zeros. 100 times 49 and 32 hundredths. Go ahead and write 49, 32. We would normally place our decimal point starting out here, but notice how we have two places. We're going to move it to the right. We're going to move it 1, 2. And go ahead and place your decimal point right after your 2. And this makes sense. If you were to estimate this 49 as just 49 holes times 100, we know 100 times 49 would be 4,900. And do you see how our answer is very close to 4,900? Our answer is 4,932. Our decimal point was right here. We moved it two places to the right, and there it is. So now let's look at our last one. The third power of 10 we know has a value of 1,000 because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And we would write 49, 32, and we normally would put our decimal point here if it was the original product, but we're multiplying it by the third power of 10. Therefore, we must move our decimal point three places to the right. One, two, because there's not a digit there, it's safe and legal to place a zero there. And now let's try that again. It was here. One, two, three. Go ahead and write your decimal point right after your zero. And let's put our comma where it belongs. Because remember, this is now our ones period, and here's our thousands period. And in fact, let's go up on this one and make a comma to remind us that that's 4,932. So the third power 10 times 49 and 32 hundredths would equal 49,320. Again, notice how this is a positive number. It is increased because we multiplied it by a power of 10. That is greater than 1. So I want you to go ahead and pause this video and let's see if you placed your decimal points in the correct position. Remember that you are multiplying by a power of 10 that is decreased of 1. Therefore, your decimal point should be going to the left. Okay, go ahead and press pause and then we'll check our answers together. Okay, boys and girls, this is what you should have had. You should have had 1 times 9,670 is 9,670. 1 tenth of 9,670 is 967. 1 hundredth of 9,670 is 96 and 7 tenths, or 96 and 70 hundredths. I hope our answers matched. All right, let's move on to our problem solving. All right, for our real world problem solving, let's go ahead and look at number 10. It says Nathan plants equal sized shares of sod in his front yard. Each square has an area of six square feet. Nathan plants a total of 1,000 squares in his yard. What is the total area of the squares of sod? So this is what we know. We know that each square has an area of six square feet. We also know that he planted a total of 1,000 squares in his yard. So we want to know the total area. In this case, it's like saying 6 times 1,000. Go ahead and write your product down. You should have said 6,000 would be the squared feet that he would need for his sod. This is also like saying the third power of 10 times 6. And we know that this would normally be 6, but we would move our decimal point three places to the right. So we would have our decimal point move 1, 2, 3, and it would be placed right here now, which is why we got 6,000 squared feet. All right, for number 11 it says three friends are selling items at a bake sale. May makes $23.25 selling bread. Inez sells gift baskets and makes 100 times as much as May. So she makes 100 times more than this amount. Carolyn sells pies and makes one-tenth of the money that Inez makes. How much money does each friend make? I want you to pause this video and I want you to try this one all by yourself and then we'll check it together. Go ahead and press pause right now. 
All right, well, the first one's done for you. It's May. May made $23.25. We understand that one. But then you should have looked at Enos. Enos sells gift baskets and makes 100 times the amount as May. So let's go ahead and see how you should have done that. You should have taken your $23.25, which is May's total, and notice how I did not put my decimal point there because I'm multiplying it by 100. So therefore, I'm going to move my decimal point from here to two places to the right. So my decimal point should go right here. So I know that would be the value of $2,325. So Inez made $2,325. Did you have that for your amount? I hope you did. So now let's take a look at the last person. The last person's name is Caroline. I'm going to put Carolyn right here. And now we know this. We know that she makes one-tenth of the money that Inez makes. So remember, we had to find Inez's total, which is 2,325. Now we have to find what's one-tenth of this amount. So that's like saying one-tenth times 2,325. Now notice how my decimal point normally would be right here. But because we're going to find one-tenth of this amount, we're going to have to move our decimal point one place to the left to make a smaller number because we're decreasing the value because it's multiplied by a factor that's less than one whole. So for this one, you should have said for Caroline that her total would have been $232.50. Because remember, our decimal point was here. We moved it one place to the left, and therefore it's $232.50. So we're going to put a zero right here because it is money. All right, I hope you got those three totals like I did. All right, go ahead and turn your paper over to the back side for your homework questions. Questions number one and two, please try on your own, and we'll check those tomorrow in class, as well as answer three through six on your own for review. And somewhere on your paper, please don't forget to rate yourself as either level 1, 2, 3, or 4. Again, take your time, read them carefully, and follow your rules for does your decimal point go to the right? It does if you're making a bigger product. It goes to the left if you're making a smaller product and you're decreasing. And you only decrease if you're multiplying by a factor that is less than one whole. All right, have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.